it's Spence, the evil genius, with your lab secrets tip of the day. In just a couple minutes, I'm going to show you how to fully install BuddyPress and BBPress. And in addition to getting both the group forums set up with the site-wide forums, I'm going to point out some of the pitfalls and difficulties that a lot of folks have been having that we've helped them with before. Using this video, you will not be having any of those troubles. It's going to be smooth sailing all the way through if you just follow in the exact order. Making it even better, at the end of it, I'm going to give everybody a free quick launch version of this BuddyPress installation so that you can go ahead and just get instant gratification. Whether or not you want to try it yourself, it's fine. You'll always know that you'll be able to get the finished result with no effort at all. Okay, let's jump in. We've got a brand new WordPress installation. I'm going to go to the dashboard under plugins and I'm going to add a new one. We're going to start with BuddyPress, of course. And as of 2.0 on BBPress, BBPress is available within BuddyPress and they work in conjunction with each other. Now, this is BuddyPress 1.61 and it installs very easily. It's got a nice um, auto installer feature here. So when you get this installed, you'll see this installation wizard. So let's run the wizard. And basically you can leave all of these options on for the time being. I'm just gonna go through all of them, have it create the pages. Now the permalinks you don't need to worry about right now. We're going to change that in a second. So you're basically just clicking save, save, save. And at the end, let's leave it with the default buddy press theme. Okay, finish and activate. That's step one. Now, here's where one of the pitfalls comes in. For better or for worse, unfortunately, as of 1.61, some folks are having trouble getting the discussion forums to allow you to create a new topic. Now, we've searched for and figured out many ways to fix this, but the best one requires you to add one little plugin. So let's start with that. We're going to go into plugins and we're going to go to add new again. And this is where we need to install a file manager. It's called WP File Manager. Now, if you have access to FTP editor or through your cPanel, that's fine too. The reason we're installing this is so that we can delete a configuration file. I know that sounds scary. Yes, it is. Don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. All right. So once this is installed, file manager, you're going to go to configuration. And you're going to just say, I want to allow two things to happen. I want to be able to view, actually three things, delete and edit. Then save those changes. Now, this is a plugin we're going to do something with, and then we're going to delete it because it's a very scary plugin to leave installed on your WordPress. So don't do that. Let's just get the job done. Go back to File Manager. What we want to do is browse to our root directory, which is what we start with here. And we're looking for this file here, bbconfig. I know it sounds scary, but as long as you highlight it and you know it's bbconfig, go to the right and click on the delete button. It's going to ask you yes or no. Do you want to delete it? Say yes. Once it's done, you'll get a message that says file deleted successfully. Super. Now we're ready to go ahead and remove that plugin. So we go back to the installed plugins and we're going to get rid of this bad boy. Okay. You can leave it deactivated, but I would just say get rid of it because quite honestly, you don't want it to fall into enemy hands. All right, good. Now we're all set. Now let's finish the installation. The rest will be a breeze. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and set up the basics of this installation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings, buddy press. Since we deleted the configuration file, what we want to do is to toggle the discussions forum. Okay, let's turn that off. Click save settings. Click it on, click Save Settings again. I know this is silly. Now go to Forums, and now you're going to have this warning that says, hmm, we don't know where your configuration file is. Which do you want to go with? The Install a new one or use existing? Click the blue button, Install Group Forums. What this is doing is basically installing a fresh version of the config file that we just deleted. And for whatever the reason may be, that ensures that the database works properly for new topics. Okay, now that's the hardest part. Everything else really easy from here. Let's take a quick look at what we have on the front side just to give ourselves an update. We're going to open this in a new tab. And we have our basic BuddyPress installation here. And we see that we've got forums. And there's no topics and we've got groups. Now with the standard BuddyPress groups uh, forum, you have to go ahead and start a group first before you can post. So let's create a group. We'll call this just sample group testing. And of course, what you can do next is set it up as a public, private, or hidden group. We can change our avatar, but we're not going to. And we can finish. 
Okay, now, at this point, you should be able to post a forum. So let's just test it. If we go to forum, let's see if we can post new topic. Testing. Test. Test. And hold your breath. Ah, it worked. All right. The rest of this is super easy. Now we've got that set up. Let's go back to our dashboard and install the BB press part so we can have site wide forums. So what we want to do is go back over here to this forums tab. And we're going to click on install site wide forums. Click install. And it's pretty fast. Activate it. And this is where it gets fun. Now, there would normally be a conflict between the BuddyPress and the BBPress slugs. Because remember, BuddyPress group forums is already using forums. So we have two choices. We can either make the site-wide forums have a unique slug, maybe something like site-wide forums, or we can change the slug for the page that is right now being used by um, BuddyPress group forums. To make this easier, I'm going to go with the first choice. So we're going to go under Settings, Forums, and we're going to configure BBPress so as to allow it to have a new slug. Now, on the way, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to allow for auto embed links just because that's fun. Lots of people put YouTube and Twitter embeds in there. Here's the thing we really need, and it's nice enough to give you a nice red warning. I want to change forums to whatever else I want otherwise. And then, like I said, I'm going to use site wide dash forums. All right. I also have the choice whether I want to prefix my site wide forums with the slug so that it would be, for example, mydomain.com slash site wide forums slash forum. Or in this case, I'm going to leave it off. And lastly, I want to make sure that this button is checked, which it is, that says I do want to keep allowing BuddyPress groups to have their own forums also. That's the goal. So I hit save. Now, last step here is because there's no default slug, because I just created a new name called Sitewide Forums, I have to go ahead and create one in my menu system. So let's go to Appearance, Menus. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and create my first menu. And I'm going to call it primary navigation. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add in those items that you'd expect. So I want to have activity, forums, groups, members, maybe a sample page. You can do anything you want there. Click save. Very important. Next, we're going to trigger that by putting it into the default location under the themes locations box. Click save. Now, I have my menu ready to go, but there's going to be one tab missing, which is the one for site-wide navigation. So let's add that manually. I want to highlight the URL and do slash site-wide forums. And I just realized I said site-wide navigation, but I need a site-wide forums because that's what I just named the forum slug, remember? And I'm going to call this the same, site-wide forums. And I think I just hit the button to pass, so let me try that again. Site-wide forums, site-wide forums, add to menu. Let's get rid of that one I just did because that one doesn't label right. And I can drag it wherever I want. Maybe I'll put it right after the regular forums. Click Save. We're very close to Nirvana. We're going to go back to the site. We're going to reload, and if all went well, we've got the tab for both the regular forums, which are, of course, the BuddyPress group forums, and the new site-wide forums for yes it worked fantastic now of course i don't have a forum in here so i could add a new topic for example or a new let's start with a new forum and this is my first site-wide forum yada yada i want to decide whether it's going to be an open or closed and again i can have it as a forum like i started with and lastly i could say if it's public private or hidden we'll make this public i publish and now when I go back, I can see the forum, be the forum, make the forum. But in all seriousness, group forums are here. Site-wide forums are here. We are golden. But you know what? I'm feeling frisky. Let's take it to the next level. What if I want to make this really beautiful? You know, the basic buddy press theme is okay, but I have one that I really think you should try out. It's called Frisco. So we're going to go to Appearance Themes. Now this one is a little underrated because I think it's fabulous and I use it on a lot of customers that have corporate intranets where we change some of the titles and other features so that they can communicate amongst themselves or with clients. So this one is called Frisco, like San Francisco. Click on it and you'll see a blue icon here. Click install now and activate it. 
Now, it's really simple because at that point, uh, there are some options for sidebar widgets and other things. But if you go back to the site and just look at it, you'll see it goes from this to this. And that's pretty slick. And you'll also see, by the way, that we've got to change this to make sure we activate that menu again. So go back to Appearance, Menus. Whenever you put in a new theme, you usually have to reset the navigation. Fortunately, you don't have to redo the actual menu items themselves. We re refresh it. Aha, we're right there. So we've got our group forums, we've got our site-wide forums, and everything is living in harmony. You want to jazz it up further? Do you notice how the background is changing a little here? So like, even though there's a special navigation header under this padding section, I like the fact that this has a nice white background. But under the site-wide forums, it doesn't. But you know what? That's easy to fix. We're going to go ahead and do a little CSS modification and make that all golden. Okay? So let's do it. We're going to go over here to menus and we're going to go back over to our plugins and I'm going to show you another plugin to install that makes it really easy to edit things. All right. If you want, you could do this with the original WP file manager. That's okay too, but I'm going to show you this way. I'm going to add new. What we want to do is type in the word edit. I'm looking for this one called WP editor. Install it now. And again, this one you can actually leave in place, but I'm going to activate it like before. What I like about this is it lets you upload a file. So what we're going to do is go over to our themes area. And what we're going to do is basically add a custom style sheet here. And that will allow us to basically change the style that we want to without having to worry about, for example, it being overwritten later. Because it'll be in a file called custom.css. And even though that's not a full child theme, at least when we go to update, we can save that file separately and then resave it with the new updated uh, parent theme. So how are we going to do this? Well, I've created a text file on my desktop and I'm going to show you this in a second. I'm going to open it with a text editor. You can do this with any text editor. It could be even a word processor, but just make sure you save it with the CSS. So it's got to be custom dot CSS, as you can see here. All right. And what I'm going to do is close this. And now I'm going to upload this. I want to make sure that I've selected the Frisco theme for BuddyPress. And now I'm going to go ahead and see, you can see a little better. I'm going to, Browse my desktop, I'm going to select custom CSS, I'm going to upload that file. Now, this CSS file won't work unless we activate it with this theme. So fortunately, if I go back over into the actual theme options under appearance, you can see there's an option here that says I want to use a custom CSS file. So I'm going to click that. Now that I do, we refresh the page. And now it looks just like the other ones. Now, if you're really curious, I'm going to include in this tutorial the custom CSS file. But let me just show you what it is. It's nothing that complicated. Um, this isn't intended as a style type of a tutorial. But just basically, I'm saying if the body has the class of BB Press and it's the full width version of the page, make the background with the color white. That's the hex code for white. And I'm also saying get rid of the box shadow that's normally around it. Because if we're on a sample page, you can see what it normally looks like. All of the default pages sort of have the gray background and the, the shadow. And those are the two elements that I changed the attributes on. Well, this is the basics of making this happen. So there's no excuse now for anybody to get stuck in setting up their basic BuddyPress, BBPress power combination. But you know what? I'm going to make this even more interesting. If you've been watching any of our videos at labzip.com, you know that I can give you an instant install of this. So what I'm going to do is save this file, and it's going to be called the Frisco Quick Launch. And I'm going to make it available to everybody for free, so you can just download it. And then you can follow the same tutorials I've shown you for the other quick launches. Without having to set all this stuff up, you could just go from zero to hero because you'll have this final product that I've just done for you without having to do all the other details. Now, I want to leave you the one last thing too because it's been a big issue with a lot of our customers. I want to make sure that when you set up your site, you never, never, ever, ever use the profile name for yourself of admin because that's the number one thing that folks with bad intentions are looking for. So in these setup files, I'm always using something benign like your name, but whatever you do, don't ever use the default name of admin Second rule is I want you to install a plugin here that's going to help you harden your site a little bit. And there's lots of other ones, but the basic one is basically to limit the login attempts because we've been seeing a lot of this action of what you call brute force. So we're going to call this limit login attempts and the plugin will come up. 
Let's go ahead and install this. There's a couple other ones that do the same stuff, but this one's the bare bones and it's really pretty efficient. And what it does is lets you go ahead and say, how many times can somebody try to log in before I block them out? And what's nice about that is if I go to settings, limit login attempts, it says here by default, four tries, 20 minute lockout, four lockouts. I'm gonna make it even easier because I'm gonna say two lockouts and then you're done for 24 hours. And I also wanna say email me after one lockout because the truth is if you have a customer or a member who can't get in your site after four tries you want to help them anyway because they're probably frustrated and in most cases it's not frustration it's basically that they're trying to do something nefarious well hopefully you've got a lot from this tutorial if you have any questions contact me at help at lab secrets or help at lab zip this is Spence we'll see you next time